Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. We look for shields, desolators, peasants, vassals, minions, snapping Turks. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And today I want to talk about this surprising uh, move by Turkey. We now have uh, Turkish F-16s making airstrikes against Kurdish positions inside Turkey. And uh, a reminder, the uh, Kurds we're talking about in Turkey are the PKK, which is the armed wing of uh, uh, Turkish uh, Kurdish resistance inside Turkey. And this is a conflict that's uh, uh, been going on since at least 1984 with over 40,000 uh, lives lost. And uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, we have the United States, the EU, and Turkey who all consider the PKK terrorists. Although interestingly, uh, the United States, of course, is uh, working with the PKK who are fighting against ISIS in Iraq and ostensibly the United States uh, is supporting with airstrikes is supporting the uh, Syrian Kurds uh, sometimes comprising members of the PKK that are in Syria so uh, once again a very interesting situation we find ourselves in so this happened in the uh, Hakkari province of Turkey and uh, Turkey claims that these airstrikes were done after PKK attacks uh, on a Turkish military uh, outpost and uh, on top of this, we've had over 30 uh, people die in uh, clashes between the government, um, Islamists who support ISIS and Kurdish uh, protesters. And then so this has uh, uh, inflamed the situation and derailed a, a year-long uh, ceasefire that is uh, more or less held uh, for the time being. And so now we have the PKK or, or moving forces uh, back from uh, Iraq, Kurdistan and Iraq, into back into Turkey. So uh, we, we, as I speculated uh, in my previous video about Kobani falling, changing everything for the Kurds, uh, we're seeing the results uh, right away. And uh, certainly these uh, uh, Turkish airstrikes on PKK positions, in the midst of everything else that's going on and all the complexities of these alliances and um, strange bedfellows that we find in, the, in this situation, um, it just gets all the more complicated. And, uh, and uh, we know that uh, Turkey essentially wants to sacrifice uh, Kobani. In fact, for them, it's pitting uh, one group, a uh, terrorist group, against another group, uh, the PKK or the Syrian uh, Kurdish militias against ISIS. And, in fact, um, one of the, uh, the spokesmen uh, for uh, Turkey, in fact, I think it was Erdogan himself, uh, spoke of uh, the fact that the PKK and ISIS are essentially the same thing and the, wor and the world needs to react to the PKK as well. And uh, this rings just about as hollow as uh, the claims by uh, Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel uh, that Hamas and ISIS are the same thing. And uh, once again, we get into this uh, gray area between who are considered uh, terrorists and who are considered freedom fighters and you know, the, the, the situation between all the alliances in this region right now uh, fighting uh, ISIS uh, amply displays uh, the complexity of this and just how fickle it is. And uh, we see uh, Erdogan and Netanyahu essentially eliciting the same uh, sort of lexicon in order to demonize the necessary opponents uh, in, inside their countries. And uh, so, so, once again, it also shows the hollowness of, the, of who is making the charges of terrorists. So let's not be so quick uh, to judge all these groups that all these uh, governments around the world tell you are terrorists, because I've also pointed out in many videos, a lot of governments are taking the opportunity to label any opposition whatsoever as some form of terrorism. Even copyright infringement is considered economic terrorism these days. And so every time we, we find a situation where uh, in Turkey the PKK are called terrorists, uh, perhaps they're freedom fighters, just as the uh, jihadis in Afghanistan in the 80s fighting the Soviet Union were freedom fighters and lauded by the likes of Ronald Reagan, and uh, yet now they are terrorists. And, uh, and, and then we also have Netanyahu labeling Hamas as a terrorist group when uh, they are an re occupation resistance group and, uh, and hardly an outside force, uh, so to claim they're terrorists uh, fighting against the state of Israel there, they are occupied uh, province, and uh, therefore under uh, Israeli jurisdiction. But I, I digress. 
Um, but I, I think that's an important point to, to bring up in the midst of all this, uh, this uh, discussion of Turkey uh, taking on the PKK in the midst of uh, the United States supporting the PKK in Iraq and Syria uh, shows that everybody is going to follow their own agendas. And we've seen this uh, clearly with uh, countries like Israel and Saudi Arabia, Iran, and all the rest involved and then all their various satellite organizations and proxy armies and the like. So, and then now that we have the latest um, step is uh, Turkey has closed the border to Kobani because they assume that anybody left in Kobani uh, is a terrorist or a, a, a Kurdish uh, fighter and therefore is not going to be allowed into Turkey. And incidentally, Turkey is uh, also responsible for restricting uh, any uh, Kurdish fighters from going through Turkey or leaving Turkey to go support the fighters in Koban, Kobani, so making the, the fighter, Kurdish fighters there all the more doomed uh, not being able to receive any uh, support uh, because of the Turkish border being closed. But uh, now uh, we have um, the border being closed completely and just uh, once again the, the Turks are more than happy uh, to have uh, Kobani fall and uh, their two nemesis, ISIS and uh, PKK, uh, kill each other, or the y, uh, YPG as the case may be. So there we have it. Uh, all the more complex. Uh, we have Turkey uh, sacrificing the city of Kobani, the United States uh, airstrike strategy around Kobani, uh, relatively unaffected at this point. And uh, now we have Turkey uh, taking advantage of this situation to uh, address its own Kurdish problem inside of Turkey. And uh, once again, we have a number of countries uh, in this region all conspiring uh, to keep their Kurdish uh, regions uh, pressed one way or another. And Turkey, of course, uh, is, is making sure that Syrian Kurds uh, remain somewhat oppressed uh, so that they have fewer problems with the Kurds in their own country. And uh, Iran has some of the same interests because they also have a Kurdish population. So uh, all the more uh, food for thought uh, looking at these uh, events unfold. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?